see you. Look at that. Look at that view. <laughs> that view. Good morning, baby. Jesus. <laughs> oh my days. Oh. You see, you see, you I'm so happy I'm alive. Mm -hmm. Oh my God! That you're right here by my side. I'm here sing both. No, no. And I just wanna thank you for always being there for me. And when we're apart, baby, I just want you to know you're always in my heart, Miss Master. I love you. Yo, 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 no, 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 Second, yeah, you see this, the, the, the heat just went up in the studio like a hundredfold. Like, it's like, a, it's like, you, why are you did that for? What? That the oven, that the oven, you just turn on the fire. You never even get an oven look little time for warm up. Anyway, we're going to fire, come. Oh, gosh. <laughs> oh, gosh. People, Itana is in the building. Good afternoon. How are you? I am great. Now, don't do like Clive. Don't be shy. Mr. When me talk to me, when Mix Master start talking to me, Miss Master, he ma crack all kind of joke and I talk hard enough. And by the time I done sing, ear, ear, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but remember saying, you know, you're one of my favorite singers, you know. You're one of my favorite singers. So I'm going to, I'm going to have, I'm going to have an, a, a, like an, a, a, an affection, a different, a, a I, soft, know, a I, know, soft I know, I know, I know, I know, and I appreciate side, that. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know, people, I'm going to tell you something. I've interviewed Itana on a many occasions, but never face to face. Isn't that strange? Like, we and I'm talking together. about years. We work together all of this stuff. Never. Never. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm blessed today, you know. I'm grateful. I'm grateful too. I'm very grateful. How are you? How are you finding London so far? I love London, man. I come like me there, Jamaica. Same what? Here. Yeah. There's what? a lot of Jamaicans. All British people are talk Patwa. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know. I was in the store, right? And this this um Caucasian British person was in there. You can't say white, you know. Is that right? Yeah, but yeah. No, true. just say white. We say black. All right. This this white man in that thing, you know. I'm going to say press the button. Him just turn on us. I said, oh, you understand what I said? I said, I don't know. I just know. <laughs> so when you're there in England, it's like, Patois is a known thing. It's like a second language. Like, they all speak it. It's true. Mm -hmm. It's true. I, I, it's, it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's just the other day you was here. But it feels like the other day. When At was... the launch. No. Yeah. The, but the launch, but then... Um, you know, Jazz Cafe. Right? Jazz Cafe. Yeah. No, 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 no. Not um, Islington. Oh yes, um, yo, I'm not even member. Yeah, <laughs> Islington. Member said Islington was like you raised the roof then. I right, see it there, July. Okay. That was that was the launch. But the, the, according to my picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. go back for the picture. Hold on, I'm not member neither. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on. Let me go in and be picture. Mm. So this picture here. Oh shit. Nicey, no, no, I mean shoot. <laughs> 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 no, sir. Yeah. No, no. Ati, no, sir. Thirtieth of April. Wow. Okay. Twenty twenty three. All right. Last so, year. Last year. Mm -hmm. You're back on the shores again. Oh yeah. <clears throat> A new album, mm -hmm. which I had the privilege of being at the album launch. That was Wolf. exciting. That was that was. We really misbehaved. Good. Yeah, we we did, mm -hmm. but it was also very emotional. It was. No, I, I was a little. I went a little deep. Yeah, but I think the people really appreciated that because they don't get to see that side of an artist. When you just you you see the artist perform, you buy the records, but you don't have any insight. 
So to have that insight when they got from you from the album, oh, like, and I, I cried, right? Yeah. Jeez. And the other lady was crying, and it was like people. The only time this ha happened to me, I interviewed Sanchez, and I asked Sanchez what was like a highlight in his career, and he said he did a show, and an old lady was in a wheelchair and she went to the show done, and then. He said hello to her and he said that the woman roll on upon the arms of the wheelchair and get up. Oh my God. And hug him. And the man stopped. It was a phone interview. The man cried 10 minutes straight. And the, the phone line, I go mad. And I say, Oh God, Sanchez a ball. And I'm thinking, What do you say to somebody? Because he's proper crying. Mm -hmm. What do you say to somebody? Remember, it's a phone interview. I can't see him. This is just based on me and him having a reasoning. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, you know what? Let's move to a lighter note. That's all I could have think of, is it? <laughs> because I'm gonna cry. Yeah, it happens to us all the time. You know, like this lady walked up to me and she um, told me that her mu the music brought her through cancer. Another girl walked up to me and she said, because of you, my mother is now six months drug free. Wow. And she said, you saved my mom's life. When you hear stuff like that, of it course. does make you cry. Uh. That, that, I'm not telling you that. Yeah. I mean, I said that I see woman throw drawers after Clive, right? Yeah. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you a story about Clive. What's <laughs> <laughs> <Busting> secret? <laughs> Clive, no. We're going on one show. Clive put on one white pants, white suit, you know. And literally, all you can see is just that. <laughs> Right, <laughs> and this lady was in the front, and she would not move. She texted Pan Clive the entire night, <laughs> and the next year when we came to the venue, Clive was not there, and the lady picked up her purse off the edge of the stage and walked out of the venue. Lie! <laughs> I swear, no way. She specifically came to see to that one thing. I saw, I saw, I mean, no, I saw, 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 I Remember <laughs> saying, no? and when show done, like, he might, they might pack up their things. Sometimes and... he might have to leave, he might have to run out and like he has to go. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it's like that. Wow. He might have to go away, he might have to go in at the back and sit down. And Mr. Clive, you know, come on. No, Sam, I'm not going back out. <laughs> <laughs> he said, no, he's not going back out there. No. <laughs> wow. But I love it. I mean, I love it. I love how the fans love him and. How they love the music and how they show up, you know. It, it, how many years? Is, I mean, we're talking about like over for fourteen years, or so. Yeah. Yeah. Boy. Was it your choice to pick him as your backing vocalist? You know, we were at a venue performing. Well, I showed up to perform at a venue, and my road manager at the time walked up and said, "Hey, um, I have two people who said they want to sing for you." But the strangest thing is. I had two background vocalists before, which I was saying to him that I want to switch them out. Okay. Um, it was just females. Them under the regular female thing. They would walk and hug up them people with them know and stuff. I mean, I said, well, I don't want them to think that they can run up on me like that. Right. You know, because you can't just run up and be all over me like that. As I must say, I need people who are going to help to, you know, teach people how to treat me. Okay. At that time. Because you know how important it was at that time for women. But it's still a fight for Mike and them thing there, you know? And he said, um, these two, and I said, wait a minute. So then, uh, husband and wife, our boyfriend and girlfriend, and what going right? That's all. <laughs> and he must say, no, man, it's brother and sister. I was like, really? And the fact that I had said to myself that I wanted two background vocalists, and they just showed up. I said, no. I'm not even going to audition them. I said, this is it. These are them because I asked for them. Wow. And it's been that way since 2007. Oh, 2007. You know, you know, I remember saying, oh, I just came up by the and you 
Salim and tell him to go here and all these things. No, we never had that. Uh -uh. Wow. Never. Never had no fuss or fight. No. We could have a disagreement, surely. No. Wow. You see, we're here my talk no, right no, now. No, no, no. He will come and say, you know, say, Shana, I'm not like that, you know. Because he don't come here and say, Shana, Shana, I'm not like that. And then we all say, and say, what is it? And I automatically adjust. Because at the end of the day, he's Clive. Wow. We don't fight. Wow. No, no, we've so never stories. had a fight. <laughs> you know but the two of we are Gemini, you know, yeah. so we understand each other. <laughs> Big up <laughs> select the people. What Gemini? I know two sometimes. No, we know sometimes we're spiritual and we kind of, you know, you. we know when to well, get well, into ourselves and when not to. Well, we're I'm a Scorpio, annoyed. so yes, we get on. Yeah, we get on. Yeah, that's true. We get on. We Gemini get along with anybody. That's why them the mistake with us were fake. We're not fake. We just we know how, we adjust quickly. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Quickly. Yeah. <laughs> no matter where you put it, we adjust quickly. My uh, artist dangerous, Junior Dangerous say he's, he's Gemini as well. My brother's Gemini. So yeah, salute the Gemini's. Are <laughs> oh, you mean? Select the princess. <laughs> I know it's trouble. I know it's trouble. You know what I mean? Like, wow. So let's go to the beginning. Because mm -hmm. remember, I, I've interviewed you a million times, but we're on a different platform. We're here now, like hailing from Jamaica. Mm -hmm. Which part? Augusta. Augusta, up in a Kingston 7. Me used to live at Arbor View, too. Oh, okay. Yeah, but uh, for maybe about two, three years, two years, I think. So, Jamaica, did you think that? You were going to be a singer? Did you want to do music? What was your family life like? You know, family play music? Um, well, my mom was a court reporter. So, what, what is that? Well, she's the person who, in the case, in the courtroom, typing. Oh, wow. On the little machine yeah. while the judge my. is talking and transcribing and doing all of these things. Wow. Does she have fast fingers? Fast fingers. That's what, what that was her job. She used to be traveling all over Jamaica all the time. So, 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 was was like a music was music for you at that time, or was it just like no? Come on, mother, they give me one typewriter too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's how your career. Mm -hmm. I was this, the one playing with the stethoscope and the dolls and trying to catch a lizard, cut them up like stick them up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so you want to be a surgeon? I would stick the lizards in the you know with the pin like in the four legs, yeah. and that's then I would true. use the little thing and cut them belly, and I'll open up to find the heart. <laughs> That's the stuff that I was into. Make me move, Miss Shirley. Right? <laughs> 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 Miss Shirley, you say no, sir. <laughs> no, no. That just mash up the whole. That just mash hey. up the whole image of Itana, you know. <laughs> <laughs> like, there's me thinking, like, oh, Itana, that, you know, probably a nice church choir and all these things. No, no you cut up lizards and all these things. Cut up lizards. And stuff like I would catch them. Let me tell you what we used to do. We used to make my grandmother used to call it a simple knot. That's what she used to say. But it's it's a knot that you kind of like make it halfway open. Yeah. And then you put it there, and when the lizard go in there, pull it, pull it, pull it. and it catch tightens, it. and See then you catch it. See it hanging. So like the business, so you was a very inquisitive child. Very. I was into everything health and I wanted to be a doctor. So, so I was curious about the human body and animals and stuff. Oh, you mean dear just yeah, John Wick style. Yeah. I, I, next to you, yes, yeah, so she takes sing, shot and gun and shot them and all these things. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> so from being an inquisitive child mm -hmm. and cutting up lizards, where did the music fit in? I used to sit down and listen to Ear Supply all the time. And every time the song would come on and say, Two less lonely people in the world, and it's gonna be. And then some, uh, that me used to sing all the day, all the time. As, as soon as Ear Supply come on, that was it for me. So when, so when, when, when you've, you've, you've done all of these things now, mm -hmm. has anybody said to you, you know, say so you should take up singing? My auntie boyfriend when you're bombshell, him come from over here to him as a selector. Bombshell turbulence? Yeah. He used to live at Augustown. And he used to be my auntie's boyfriend. Wow. And when me you, a little you know, girl, so me and Bamsha used to the same stage of I'm whoopy kill Philip. When me a little girl, he say, you know, so me I go carry 
carry go down the road on the sound system because you have to go sink and people need to hear you because you have voice. And he brought, I was like eight. And he gave me the mic and he said, sing, sing any song where you know. And and then um, my aunt, then I got a little bit braver. My aunt ran at the back of wash our clothes. I mean, sing, um, I found the greatest love of all. You know, load with me, I lock. And then the people might look over the fence, but me, I never know. Then I started singing for Harborview Primary. Um, I would do, um, uh, what's the song again? And it's snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the world looks blue and green. You remember that song then? No. Yeah. But it sounds good anyway. Yeah, it's, yeah, man. It was, it's a very old song and I, and, and I did that song. Um, and then by the time I migrated, I would sing for my, I was singing the national anthem for my middle school. Okay. Um, and then the first time I was on the stage in middle school, I needed to use the restroom. I didn't use the restroom before going on there. And then when the band come up and rise up, I'm rich. And the rocket's right there. I'm going to say, a piece of people take me by the time I reach, come off of the stage. My whole shoes stuck and everything was wet. <laughs> By then, I gained enough confidence. I still never thought to be a singer, even then. Really? Mm -mm. Wow. I wanted to be a doctor. So it wasn't until like later in my life when I worked as a office manager, doing the same thing every day, going into the office, open the office, close the office by the time all the engineers come out. And I, I said, I just didn't want to do this anymore. And I was telling a friend of mine, and he introduced me to his friend who was looking for four girls to do a, um, to be in a four girl group. And that's when I went there, did the audition and got in. So it was a P. Diddy. So it was R&B. No, never P. Diddy. You got him. Jesus. Never. Never did me. They did not did me. And when I went there, the problem that I was having is that, no, we used to go shopping. I there were issues and everything is pros and cons. Mm. I was not allowed to eat when I want to eat. Okay. I had to work out every day. So I was very skinny, very toned. Body looked good at everything. Toned. Right? And I had on lingerie. Pink. Dolly looking lingerie. Dolly. <laughs> Where is it? Reggae Dolly. That, no, it was, it was R&B rock music. Oh, uh, R&B rock. R&B rock. Okay. Nothing to do with reggae. Okay. And um, I was like, damn, you look hot. You're beautiful. But this is that's what you want. Because the cameraman, the one thing I couldn't, I couldn't get over it. The man pulled the camera down so low. I have the camera in between my legs. Remember, I said, I thought I have enough. So when my son turned to the left and I did a routine, I said, shoot, what is he seeing? Uh -huh. And I was like, no, nah, this is not. How right. old was you? Uh, probably about 19. Wow. I was like, no, this is not for me. I can't do this. I got to go. And when they gave us a break to take holiday to go to, um, I went to Jamaica and I just never went. Well, part of the reason why I never go back is because my ex-boyfriend at the time stole my um, identification for me to enter the United States again mm -hmm. and hid it. He paid oh. somebody to keep it and put a security at the front of the door and at the back of the door and basically locked me in the house. So even if I wanted to go back, I couldn't go back. Oh, wow. But I never did want to go back anyway. But he restricted me so much, locked me down in the house. I had to find my way, forget the way. Like I made, I waited till the guy was sleeping. I did my sleep in the bucket, in the wheelbarrow. Him drop a sleep in the wheelbarrow. <laughs> <laughs> in the house. And I open the door <clears throat> and run down the street. And funny enough, the lady who owned the store was somebody I knew from Florida. Okay. And she is the one who loaned her phone to me so I can call my cousin to come and get me a summer get her from him. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's just, deep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it's <coughs> a lot. It's a whole lot. I'm going to need an old day to talk the part there of life, but I got away. 
People, if you're just logging on, it is UrbanExtraRadio.com. We have a special guest in the building, Itana. Now, Itana, you've gone from 1920. Mm -hmm. The first hit record for you. Yeah. What was it like having a hit record? Because no, you've gone from from where? What R and B rock? We don't want no trouble. We don't want no trouble no day. We don't want. We don't want no trouble, you know, Miss. I don't want no Ra! trouble. You don't I want don't know no what he said. <laughs> 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 we don't want no trouble. No, 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 no. You, you've mashed up the whole image, wholesome image I had. You know, say, you know, say, I got tears on the phone. I got dash you. We don't want it again. No, 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 no. But I was a kid then. I was a little kid. It don't no matter. It don't no matter. It don't no matter. <laughs> Jesus. Every, every time I look for you now, it's just going to be a thing. You're going to see me Dang! That means that that means that anytime me play and DJ for you know if me play around through this like Lord God Almighty what go happen to this show? <laughs> <dog?"> <laughs> the next minute now you find some under hey, uh, Islington town hall or some deep dungeon down there you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know so Clive hey make sure you know me me go give my mother number for Clive yeah, if anything yeah. comes through <laughs> the road with the town you know what I mean? Next minute you see me hand pin you know what I mean and. Then she's going to say, eh, let me see your art look. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, sir. No, 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 no. Somebody says she can't she can cut the bar out. No. <laughs> <laughs> then if I cut the bar out, we'll go play the music. No, oh, no, you see? Sure. You see? Welcome aboard to my beautiful wife at work. Are you amazing? She's locked in listening, man. So, hold on. We don't want no trouble. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you had a completely like different image at that time yes if people are not real nappy head when, when not wrong, warm, address, right? wrong address um yeah. barefoot sometimes slippers sometimes khaki skirts clocks clocks turban turban it, it, Dog was, life. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was it was completely different yeah Compared to now, you, you, you up to the time and modern things. Oh, jeez. <laughs> you know I mean, Versace I mean, glasses. We, we, we evolve, you know, like, you, you, you're you not going to stay the same way for your entire life. I mean, maybe spiritually. Yeah. Even in spiritually, I've grown. So let me ask you the same question I ask him then. Because <clears throat> he said, in believing our God, but no to Jesus. What are you saying? Um, I don't know. My view of Jesus is a little bit different. It's like a prophet, like a, you know, like how we have prophets, mm -hmm. like powerful people mm -hmm. who can heal you and stuff like that. And just like he was the son of God, you're the son of God. I'm the son of the daughter of God, you know? Um, and I believe in God just the same, um, all the time, every day. And I pray consistently, constantly throughout the whole day. Um, and the minute I get a moment, I'm always having that moment with yeah. the most I have some still like I but my spiritual body now. I, I'm gonna ask you No, all, like deep deep. With all that you've been through, <laughs> and if people are not familiar with sometimes when you go on the live and you had you know the issue with the record company and stuff over the many years, it would take a lot of spirituality to get you through that situation, right? Yo, as I thought about that, somebody texts me today. And say, yo, the court um dismiss more of your case. And that them one put up. But you know, me go put me go post the ruling. You see what I'm done? Me go take the, the summary of the ruling and post it on my page. Okay. Because the the judge says that yes, um the argument of the copyright is time barred. Like you have six years to make a claim right. like that. But my claim regarding it being time barred. Um, was that it continues, but I'll be able to address that in the trial, right? Of course, if we go to trial, right? Um, but the judge says that <coughs> as it relates to the publishing agreement, that um, the argument that the defendants made, which is the VP, mm -hmm. is denied on both contracts, right? So they at this moment they don't own the publishing from them time to till now, so. That is serious for a distributor 
all right? And right. for somebody in a fitting position that's serious. Okay. So that part of the case continues, and she's forcing us to go and sit and have um, settlement talks for one hour. If And she says, if that doesn't work, if we can't come to an agreement, then we're going to have to go to the court and see her face to face. Wow. Yeah. That's where that we deep? are right now. And we've been in the in the court for three three years. At any stage, did you think that you did just said, sure, can't bother with this? Yo, after my, I, I had to fire the first set of lawyer. And the second lawyer that I hired, he was very enthused. He was so excited and happy to get on the case. Right. And then soon after, my pay my advance to him. Him call me and said, "Oh, I've had an accident and I and I'm banged up pretty bad and I and and I can't talk now, but I will call you back next week." That is after him first meet them and after after the first meeting when him after okay. them because they have to meet. Okay. And after that first meeting, when we talk back to the man again, him saying they banged up and in other accidents, and the following week the man changed him entire tone for me. Oh. And never wanted to ask VP for the evidence that I was asking him for. Him say if. Him have to ask VP for the evidence. Him have to withdraw. I said, well, withdraw today. Mm -hmm. And he was like, oh, oh, um, we can talk about it. I said, hello. You don't say what you are say, and me say what me are say. You say you have to withdraw. If you have to ask for the evidence, you're going to withdraw today. And I never have no further con conversation nor gave him the opportunity for go for send nothing more. I just send a letter straight to the court and tell the judge, say, yo, him have to be removed from the case right now. Today. And the judge re removed them the next day. I, I know. So that I'm a second set of lawyer when I have a fire. So I have to fight the case by myself, pro se. So from the time I fired the lawyer, I've been pro se all the way through. Mm -hmm. Finding all of these rules, all these things, you know, basically doing things myself. Because every time I've tried to find a lawyer, after they do that first meeting, the first set of lawyer, them almost choked my entire case. And when I caught them, when I catch them, you know, it was right on the brink, you know, where the lawyer, you know, the judge could have just ruled and choked my entire case, yes. you know. May I have a right to the judge and tell them, said them seem like them compromise. Them filed my case wrong in at the beginning. They did all of these things. And when it, did, when it was time for them to require certain things from the defendants, them that fall back and, and act like them I do it, but them not really do it. Right. And when we catch them, I had to dismiss them right away. Like I had to I request that they be removed from my case. So it was, it, it was very difficult for me because I had to learn quickly. I had to be on my toes quickly. And I had to be as aggressive as these people are. Because after them, take your work, you know. Like the songs that I'm arguing about, is songs that were produced before me meet them. You understand? And then when they were account to me, they were account to me as if the song them like them did pay a feed and them own it. These songs were sold and transferred to different companies around the world. They made all of these monies and applied none of that money to my uh, to my to my um account right so in other words them are telling me send me still two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in the red which is impossible mm -hmm. and we found in many instances where you know they would have collect like over hundreds of thousands of dollars off of these songs and when them applied to my account was like nothing pennies nothing oh. and not only that they oh. settled with kemar mcgregor on some of these songs that i come up over 23 songs with kemar, kemar mcgregor and they settled with him after the court found that um, the the contract that they used to sell Kamar McGregor Publishing was invalid. It was fraudulent. And they had to settle with him and pay him. But at the time when they settled, everybody that was a part of that catalog, they were supposed to reach out to those people. Oh, and you didn't get no reach. And they never reached out to them at all. Wow. And imagine now, at this time, it's still in a one contract with them I try to finish and at that time when we just start there is no way I could have sued them because I didn't know as much then of course, like what we know now. now of course of course so but by that time the six years have already passed right the time the time the, right. the time scale what they're talking about okay right but 
I thought to myself, I'm going to leave you with my catalog for your kids to live off of my catalog like you did everybody else before me. They died and you, while them are collect, like, send so round collection plate, plate mm. right? You are called a family for still buy them catalog when they dead. That can't work. And you think that I'm going to sit there and allow you to get away with all that you have without paying me. Even my second, uh, my I Rise album, I own 50% of that album. And they never treated it like that. They sold it as if they own 100%. You understand? And when people look on Kemar McGregor and say, Kemar McGregor crazy because he's always talking a lot of things. It's been 18 years. And even after them settled two time with Kemar McGregor, them still don't want to tell the, any of the, 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 the uh, performance royalty companies that we own our rights to our work. Okay. Them, them refused to do it. Me, Kemar McGregor, and all of the people that were, were created, I'm not afraid, went on, um, went, created a letter because the performance royalty company is supposed to look out for the artists. So we write a letter and say, yo, this is the producer. These are the writers. These are the people involved in the songs. Right? And here's a settlement agreement where VP acknowledge that the rights belong to these people right. in court. Right? And you know what they said? We, the creators, have to go back to the distributor of the work. Which is, which is, which and they're supposed to protect our rights. Yeah. We are the creators. Yeah. And them said, we forgot back to them. Right? And that's why we ended up in court again one more time because. Them are telling me, say, the reason why we ended up in a lawsuit is because they were telling me that it was Kemar's fault. Why we you wasn't did. getting our so my royalties. And then the, in BMI to now, the, the, the head, one of the, the executives told them that they are going to wait for um, some kind of court order before them pay out any more money to them because they have found that they were collecting on one of the songs when they should not have. So all heap of things are going on in the background. Even though yesterday I recreate albums and yeah. I go up on stage and I'm doing all of these. I'm doing all of this while I'm fighting a case on my which own. Is wh which is why... While the, the media uh, suppressed me and the first thing, them not, them not talk about the order itself, you know, and how... The court basically said, okay, yeah, man, VP, this time barred, but yes, it this over yourself. Not to We're going to move forward on this part right here. They're not talking about that, you know. The first thing they said, oh, the court dismissed um, more parts of your case. Right. No, it's not more because from morning, the first court, the first judge did already say it. part of it was time barred. It no means to say I'm own my right, you know. It means I still own my rights. Right. Right. It going. means that I cannot fight it in court. So if me want, I could go and re-release entire thing and re-record and do anything when I want to come and still have my rights. Yeah. It just means say time barred, but it doesn't mean that I lost my right. So, so then, when we're talking about spirituality, right? Because by this time now, your head hot. My head hot long time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you, yeah. you're completely, you know what I mean? You're doing it all by yourself. Yeah. And, and, and I don't know, people, if if you noticed, right? Did you notice that when she said that she got rid of the second set of lawyers, she was talking all nice and speaky spooky. The then the switch the turned on to the Jamaican. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah, because. Did, did you, did you, is, is that how you actually, look, all right, let me give you an example. My favorite auntie, Liv. America, Florida, right? From Carindan. When she's amongst peers and you know, speaky spooky, like my mom is the same way. She, voice. Yeah, to, to that, no, but it's the typical Jamaican, that, that speaky spooky voice. Mm. Then, when you're around certain people, the brawling just forward out. My mm. always talks and all. Yeah, but did you speak to them in that level, like to say, hello? <laughs> Hello, sir. No, yes, when you tell me, say, oh, if I have to ask for those evidence that you're requesting, I'm going to withdraw. Yeah. 
Me say hello, withdraw today. Today. Yeah. Not today. And him say um. <laughs> oh, but I, but I I believe we can talk about it. Me say. Nothing you say what you say. And me say what me say. We don't have nothing more for that about. And as soon as we came off the phone, I wrote the letter and sent it to the judge immediately. I mean, I didn't even wait for him for sending him one. So the coarseness, the coarseness in your voice, obviously, you know, kind of scared him then. I mean, I think it scared him because they're my, they're my drunker. Yes. Them now have no art. Real drunker. Real. No, them now have no art Ultra. whatsoever. And, and you know, as you said, you, you've peered in her. And I paid my us, money. That's what I'm saying. You've paid your money. Yeah. And then all of a sudden now, oh boy, I'm meet no accident. I'm not saying that he may not. No, have. I think they beat us. I think they beat him. I think them beat him. I don't know. But me just a wow. thing say, you know. I remember said the first one them did seem kind of compromised. So it never surprised me that after the they second meet, one, right? That the, now he's gonna be because him switch him too and too too quick. Too quick. Then you're better to obviously. You know what I mean? With all the years of experience that you have, and I mean, how many remember you know, and for people who don't know and who are not familiar with you, right, in this in this interview right now, courtesy of Urban Extra Radio, you're two time Grammy nominee, you know. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I work, I work hard. Is three uh, is, now, right? I work a tree, hard. A tree, no? tree. no, I'm on the I'm on the I'm on the, the that list, the, the list, but I mean, let me tell you something, you see. I think that I worked extremely hard as a female. Which I was going to ask you, obviously, remember, yeah. as you said, you had to fight for the microphone in that time. Because remember, oh, yeah. this is this is before social media, you know? Yeah. This is, when, this is when record are selling all these things. I walked the streets. I walked the streets and distributed my CDs. Oh, wow. Whoa. You see that white ear man there when he fire? May I forbid him up, you know? Because fire used to walk and give out CDs to buses in a different tones. We I walk the streets. I would pull up at sound systems no matter where they are and just sing. And people sometimes after wrong address, they were shocked to see me do that. Because by this time I was a known artist. Yeah. And yo, me, me walk the street, but do the thing, but do work. Roots is one of my favorite songs, you know. Yeah. But but work, man. And you, you, like, you've put in the work over many, many years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me do, me work, me do the street. Me do it. You fast forward now into 2024. You've been around the world. Your African fan base is just phenomenal. It's like, huge. It's this. I, I, I don't. Bar maybe miss so much people roll up for busy. A Kenya and them busy. You and Africa is like hand in glove. Like, what's that like when you you reach at them places? Remember, I said some of them don't even speak English. What's it like when you walk out on the stage and see? And I'm not talking about no look a PR PR show, look a 500 eight on me. I talk about sea of people. Mm -hmm. What what's that like when you step out on that stage? Stadium. Massive. It's wicked. I mean, from Atlanta, Africa, from Atlanta, Kenya. The audience, the the, the, the the media that shows up at the airport alone uh, is so <laughs> massive. You know. Do you um, feel claustrophobic? Because remember, you reach now and it's like, it's on! Ah! Like, you, you, you have to rely upon Clive. Andre, you know, you know, pull your usually, usually they're right next to me, you know. Right, like, right. Right up on me. Right. So it's not so easy for them to go directly to right. me. Right, yeah, yeah. Because Clive is on one side, Andre on one side, the rest of the band, the rest yeah. of me. But it, I love it. I love the love they give to me. You know? Are you there again this year? Oh, yeah. I'm going to be in Kenya on December 7th. Um, all the way to the 15th. I have like three, four shows. Let me ask you something then. So, oh, you're not carrying me. <laughs> you need to tell me too. No, no, no. But this, but this is something that we want to know. I you, agree. You, 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 you call, you, you, you will call me. Jay, we need to come to this. Jay, <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry. We soon get to the singing part. Don't worry about that. But, me no CD master when you're a DJ. Me. Ra! Me, 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 no, me no CD. CD master. Me, me no CD master. I, I, but me no feel the same of no entertainment value like me. Yeah, you're not CD. 
Me don't feel like you have no entertainment value like me. Can imagine if me had the two no? No, 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 no. You don't need to sing. No good again. You wouldn't need to sing. Me, I tell you. me okay. and him. No, sir. You, from when you come out and they say, ah. Where do you burn up? Remember, say Kenya and Kenya love reggae. This is not no about no dance This is a straight yeah, man, reggae. Yeah, man. Venue, venue, born up. In me at the tour, no, it's over. Wow. That, you, have, you know, say you have to make it happen. You know? Yes, I agree. You have to stretch the budget. <laughs> me agree. And you know, say see the man start go for true. Me go, me go, I'll see. Somebody said murder. Murder. See the man start go for true. See the man start Yo, yo, yo. Yeah. <laughs> me would I do all the running up and down. You just select. Me do the all the rest of the, the rest of the I'm, mad. I'm I'm not gonna lie, that would be crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you're here in the UK now. You also have you launched a new album, Nectar of the Gods. Mm -hmm. Like, I love that album. It's probably some of your best work to date, considering what you've been through with the entire everything, time, the whole, right? The whole time. Yeah. Yeah. When you look at the album, recently Bonte, and I'm going to ask you the same question, mm. Bonte say, reggae is not, it's not a contemporary music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can play reggae anytime. Anytime. Yeah. Anyway. When you look as, a, as you, the artist, mm. and you look at the industry now, Remember, I said you tried this road farm selfish as you go host top like for those who don't understand from a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Where is the. What's wrong? What's wrong with the industry and what's right with the industry of reggae music in, in the eyes of Itana? Yo. My thing say. Radio DJs have a responsibility. Hmm? Just like the artists have a responsibility. Yes, it is business, and I agree, it is business. So I think collectively we have to find a way to do the business the right way so that it's not a hustle across the board. Okay. Because you have some, some you know, like, oh, only certain albums or certain people, you know, make it to Grammy nomination or make it. I, I'm saying Grammy because everybody talks about the Grammy. Mm. But it takes levels. It takes a certain thing, you know. It definitely isn't just, just create an album and put it out and, oh, it's going to be nominated. It doesn't work like that. Um, so there's levels to the thing. And I'm not saying that we're not supposed to put out music and that a DJ is not supposed to pay like a, you know, but there needs to be like a section for that, for like new music. So you give everybody the opportunity. But then... At certain time, at certain periods, they need needs to be like certain kind of music that is played, and it has to mean something that your music is being played in that section. You know, just mix up everything and play the song two time and pull up, <coughs> pull up, money pull up. money pull up, and all that shit. Come on now, we need to we need to straighten it out and take it a lot more seriously. And at least like ninety percent of our music, reggae and dance, all need to be played in Jamaica, in our country, where it come from. So, are you saying that reggae is not being played oh, no. enough in Jamaica? Maybe thirty percent. Wow. You hear more hip hop on the radio, and, that's, and then something there, you know. That's what I was and told. In America <laughs> and in and the rest of the world, nobody's doing that. So, whose fault is that? Because Kabaka sat here and said that times have changed. We come from you. You come from an era of record and record sales. Right. That was very important for you as the artist. Now it's digital. It's streaming. It's all of these other platforms. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Robert. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, like the money where you could I make from selling albums, you yeah. definitely don't make it. So the question should be, why you even bother doing an album? Then I do it for my fans. You do it for the fans? Yeah. I nice. spend the money and I do the work for my fans. Because when they show up to my shows, they buy the CDs. They buy the USBs. They buy the vinyls. They buy... I do it for my fans. Um, I don't do it for numbers and say, Oh, I sell a million record runners, so I'm going to get a million stream. That's why I don't buy streams. 
So you don't, you don't, you're not involved. I don't buy views and them something. Yeah. I don't do that. Organic. Because I need to know where I'm at. And I can't know that if I'm constantly buying. I need to see my numbers for real. And I'm not afraid of people saying, oh, but you only have this amount. I don't care. Right. I really not care it's about that. Job. What I care about is that my fans reel to the bone from morning. On Facebook, my page has been stuck at 1.1 million because I did a chat only for things about COVID and bigger things. So them, 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 them put in an Instagram jail. Yeah. <laughs> but again, you know why I'm in a care? I mean, I, I don't, you know, I, I have kind of adjusted the way I communicate. Okay. So I care to some extent. But I've seen one of the biggest white bands in America post a show. It was about fifth, not even quarter of the people that me have by my page. Mm -hmm. So me, I said to myself, oh, come, them venues so big and they sell out and they have all these millions of fans. But then they're on Facebook. And they're not on Facebook? No. So me, I said, oh, so these numbers then are just for show. Because them boy they are the real numbers. Money numbers. And they it now match up to me. Okay. So may I say something off. So I don't get caught up in the hype. I've never been the type of artist to get caught up in the hype anyways. Never. Like me just do my thing. I don't watch other artists. I don't watch people. But I noticed that one thing. I may I say yo. I'm not in the buying of numbers and them something. I need, I need to see for real. Yeah. I'm not afraid of women there for real. Like if my numbers are a thousand, I'm good with a thousand. Leave me alone and my thousand people. Because they're going to show up for me. And, and, and that's what, to me, is the best thing ever. Well, I mean, considering... Considering, like, you launched the album here in the UK, I was there. You see the I people them? <laughs> I, I, I saw. The, you know what I mean? It was yeah. the people was just like they were there in their droves and and they come out to support the music. I mean, Islington Town Hall was next level. That was wall to wall with people. When you said, talk about that show that Islington it, Town Hall. Now, when we were trying to come over here, right? Me ear. But them time, the members say, holy people are black me too, you know, because of VP and the case and them are things that me a troublemaker and all of these things and them have names for me, you know? They labeled you. They labeled me as the troublemaker. But let me tell you something, fighting for your own rights, if you're not brave enough to do that, then just nobody say nothing. Don't talk because you don't know, you know? You don't know. So not talk. So anyway, I said, all right then. Since you know, since you know why I'm coming out, we booked one venue and paid for the venue. And when the flyer go up, the promoter called back and says, the, the venue owner called back and says, sorry, we can't do the show here. Oh, really? At that, I said, okay, I'm going to spend my own money, rent another venue, a bigger venue than your one, and I'm going to keep the show there. And that's what I did. Wow. This is the so this is this, this is the backstory. The venue no? owner, yeah, send back an email after we put up the flyer. Say sorry, we can't keep the show here. So you know, so somebody send one uka stick. We are on a yeah, back right, star, right. Uka, them, yeah, and we couldn't use the venue. I was told I can't use it. <laughs> so wow. when that's why when I was on the show at the night when the show was done, I said. I want everybody in here to know, especially those who never wanted me here, to know that this is exactly why I'm here. And I'm grateful to see all of you who showed up to this venue. Um, that's why I was like, you know, saying thank you. And and people, trust me when I, when, 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 when <laughs> I say this, right? She finished the show and they said, they're going to take some pictures at the back. Yo! <laughs> Missing people to me weak. <coughs> I saw, like, the queue, with the security man was like, yo, 
<laughs> you know what I'm going with? He was overwhelmed for true, yeah. He, he was overwhelmed and then he's trying to keep the order and people, they want their picture, they want their vinyl sign, they want to buy the vinyl, they want to buy the merch. I have a part of a fight that night. I was uh-huh. like, no, you don't, you don't need to fight. I'm going to part a fight. And Andrew was like, no, don't go in at the middle. Because it was two men. But my part them. And at the end of the night, it was wonderful. Oh, I, 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 I mean, <laughs> dangerous. You've never seen it turn up a farm? All right, we're going to make that happen. I, if you've never seen her perform, like... She did the the, the, the the meet and greet what we did at Brixton. Remember? Oh yeah. Big up little Kyla. Alright? Oh, she was so cute. Yeah. But she can't sing the one. She's brave. And she's very brave. Brave. Because I, I as I said, I'll never forget. And you know the same thing you just say, you know. I mean, notice some people they try to take ownership of the fact that I them did say nah for not not gonna say you no. Know? <laughs> <laughs> and them boss are, and me say, okay, mm-hmm. and that you want to do. No problem, I'll let you have, because everybody knows the real, yeah. the real truth, right? Yeah, yeah. That it brought you to tears at your own meet and greet. I know, she did. Then, to have her forward to Islington. It's amazing to see somebody so young. So young. Sing, people talk. Yeah, it was amazing. It, I got emotional, yeah, I did. And then on top of that, and I'm going to say it again. The place was full from early. The anticipation. It was Waiting there. to see you. Yeah. Like, it, it, was, it was a madness. I played my part because to raise the energy and the level, it was, it, it was a madness that night. I, I think it's one of those nights. Did I sing? Oh, you made them sing so hard. Like, it... It's one of those. It's one of those events that you know. You, all right. What's your most memorable concert? Oh, the top of your head, quick and fast. Would you say Jamaica, Africa, Europe? Where you could have say, like, I have you've memories not- all of, in all of those parts. But I think the the biggest one to me hmm, was when Medea Sting and them lock off the light. Mm-mm. It was the first time that it ever happened in the history of Sting. Somebody shut off the light on me while I was on stage. Someone shut the light? Shut off the light. Shut, shut off, off the, the power. system. Shut off the power. Oh, everything, lock off everything? Everything lock off completely. When you are perform? Yeah. And Clive and Tommy start to walk off the stage. I'm say, oh, won't well, I go? Come back over here, sir. I'm going to say, um, when we did sing, Every day I rise on a prayer, loud, a cappella. And the whole crowd from the front, to the back of the stage start sing. And we were just there singing in the dark. And mm. and when we walk off of the stage, we buck up in a Shaggy and Sharon Burke in the hallway. And Sharon said, Etana, only you could have done that. Me not think nobody else could have done that. Remember, say, I sing this in a night. Wow. Yeah. And, um, I, later in the time, I, I say, Leng. I miss say, Leng. Um, why, how come that happened to me on the stage? Yeah, me need it, my mouth getting dry. Yeah. I said, how come that happened to me on stage? And, um, Leng say, um, him no know about somebody drain out the, the, the gas out of the transformer. Out of well, the, out, 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 out of the generator. generator. Somebody drained out the gas out of the generator while me up on stage for shut it off. Purposely. That's so you're powerful? That's what I'm afraid of me for no reason. Wow. I, I can't... I, is it internal was like that moment for me? Me not lie. Me get some but big But they forward. were singing. Remember? They must sing this big old choir. <laughs> yeah. Like a thousand... Was it? A thousand and odd max. Upstairs, ram. Downstairs, At the wood ram. Place. Right? And... When you came out, it's the people them just you could, for me in the pit looking at them, I'm like right in front of them. I, like the, the electricity in the room was just was crazy. To see you. Some people have never seen you perform. Yo, let me talk to you about spirituality. Me, I give you one little story, one short story. 
Yeah. And this time, me nah hold back nothing. Me nah hold back nothing. Me have to talk straight up on my mouth. You see. <laughs> <laughs> We're going for some water for you, don't worry. We're going for some water. Look, we're there. I don't know if I should tell the whole story from the start or just talk about when we're there, Ghana. Which part? Talk from the start? So, we there. We have 30 minutes. My man turned around and looked at him. In, in. <laughs> because I just tell you. So, I was supposed to do three shows with Shaggy and you, Shaggy Ban. And the first show was in Miami. And the banner player for me, I may say, them time that I'm not afraid, just, just I come out. Is it Roots? I think I Roots, don't. Mm -hmm. Roots are, I'm not afraid. Anyway, yeah. when we done perform, Probably Roots. when we reach and the crowd leap up, so who you open at the ear? It's when we reach in New York, we had three shows. Was it four? New York, Miami, New York. St. Thomas and Ghana. I'm going to say, when we reach in New York, I'm going on the stage with my guitar. I'm going to go so, bring sound come out nice. Background vocal, I'm say, whoo, vice, dede. Other guitarists were supposed to back me up, go so, bring <coughs> sound, dede. So when the curtain open, I'm going to go so, bring, bring. <laughs> My back went first, so, whoo, nothing. Mm -hmm. I said, Rotted, no. I turned around and look, and Shaggy was standing up by the drummer like this. Remember, I said, I'm not performing it, and I'm here to open it So, I said, I just go out there and sing the same way, and mash up the place the same way, but I was so mad. My cost about 90 level bad word. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember when Sharon was saying, it's how not, it's how not you got to do the media. You have to do the media. So which media? And come out for the stage and call a taxi. I called a yellow cab taxi and went back to the hotel and sat there. I mean, if that's really, you know, I said, okay, then we we'll calm down. We reach a center mass. I was told, hey, the background vocals, them can't sing with you up on the stage. They're going to sing from behind. And when we reach on the stage, the man them play the music so slow. Me cry. Me say, live in your water. Like, what for flap you? I cried so hard while I was singing. Wow. And you see, when me start to cry, me only hear the thunder roll. And the lightning boss. I'm going to tell you something. You see, the rain will fall. Show done. No more show couldn't keep after that. Show done. Then, I go to Ghana and I was told that if that no, I was told that the, the, the main artist he's requesting that him take up the whole MTV Africa time and him now share it. So me I forgot to perform after Wayne Marshall. It was me in my Wayne Marshall. I made up on the stage. Boop, my mic cut off again. Oh, that my sister stand upside of the DJ like this. So I just put on the mic on the ground. I'm going to say, I hear the sound of a Rasta man say, <laughs> Babylon, you chewing gandong, gandong. I sing loud. I'm going to say, the crowd take up the sound and gone. So when I come off of the stage, me start to pray. I must say, I remember it like yesterday. Me I pray and the water start to run on my face. And so I reach down on the last step. I say, fire, fire, fire. You yes, see, by the time I reach into the car, I reach over here, boom. Boom. Fire. Everybody has to run up out of that. <laughs> Not trying Everybody have to run up out of that. Sharon Burke come to me and say, You're a witch. You're a witch. I said, Call it when you want to call it. Oh dear. This a, this a, I, 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 you not talking about water there, Mo Dida? No, you know, I'm not dropping a catch. Wow. So then with a turn around, no, I have you say you have practice, Obia? No, but them call me that all the while, but I don't care. 
Me not care. When you have a connection with the Most High, you fear no evil and you fear no one. And as long as you know that connection, you are right. But you have to really, really connect. And God know him one. So God carry him one. Please don't call down my lightning. Don't bother call no. No, no, me the ball. You don't need to see no rasta song. You don't need to call down no lightning. Hey, lock off all of them sitting over there, so please. Me no want nothing bundle in here with me. No, 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 no. No. Yeah. no. Wow. That's so, that's a level like, of spirituality we really are talking about. I know a little bit. I and, and it's I'm very, I'm very in tuned. Yeah. That's what I'm gonna say. Stay connected to the worldly changes.